Hi everyone, this is Matt to show and intro stats and today I wanted to show you how to uh, analyze uh, non-normal quantitative data, so skewed data. Uh, we had talked about sort of the theory of this, how we want to use the median and the quartiles and the interquartile range. Um, so let's get right to it. So again, I just wanted some data to analyze. So if you go to my website, matt-2show.org, um, we're on the statistics page, and I'm going to click on data sets. Um, there's a lot of good data on here. I'm going to look at the Math 140 Fall 2015 survey data. This was a survey of students in the Fall 2015 semester. So if I click on that, um, and it's got a lot of data, by the way. So you got a lot of data here. So you kind of keep scrolling until you find what you want. Uh, the one I was interested in is how much money do STAT students uh, at our college spend on their cell phone bill per month in dollars? So we asked students how much they spend on their cell phones per month uh, in dollars, and these are the answers they gave us. Um, okay, so if I wanted to go ahead and um, calculate this, um, let's take a look. Uh, let's start with STAT key. So again, if I go to lock5stat.com and then click on stat key, I get this menu. And again, this was one quantitative data set. So under descriptive statistics and graphs, you're clicking on one quantitative variable. It's kind of in the top left, one quantitative variable. Just like that. And now, uh, now I just want to edit, put in the data. So what you, uh, whenever you're putting data into stat key, you want to just click the edit data button. Now if you look at this data here, um, this data has a, a word next to every number. We call that an identifier. So, um, and uh, the data we are going to put in does not have that. So again, the first thing I want to do is delete out the data that's in there. Kind of an easy way to do that is to push Control A. If you're on a Mac, it would be Command A. And then delete. It kind of deletes out all the data really quickly and easy. Now I'm just going to paste, so control V, I'm going to paste in that uh, data about uh, how much money do you spend on your cell phone per month. Now this, does, this data does not have an identifier. There's an identifier again, it doesn't have a word next to every number, but it does have a title. So here's the title, and that in StatKey they refer to that as the header row. Header row means it has a title. So then I'm going to leave that checked. Now every once in a while you'll see StatKey has a problem with the title. Sometimes it's when it has weird apostrophes or weird um, things like that in the title. So if it ever says error, sometimes what I do is I just delete out the title and then uncheck this box that says header row and then you can still analyze the data. Let's see how it does. Yeah, see it had no problem with the title that time. So here's our here's our data. Notice it gave us a gave us really a lot all of the basic statistics. We know that the sample size there was 331 students that uh, stat students that answered the question. We see the mean and standard deviation, the minimum, quartile one, quartile uh, three, and the median, and we have the maximum. Okay. So notice again it gave us a whole list of statistics right out right out of the gate, which is I love that. Now the one thing we want to really focus on though is the shape. What's the shape of this data set? You can see how the most of the um, students answered kind of a lower dollar amount and then you had f a few students that answered very high dollar amounts. And this has a very skewed right look to it. If you push histogram you can also see that it, the highest bars are on, kind of on the far left and again uh, we have a very long tail to the right and a short tail to the left, so this is what we refer to as skewed right or positively skewed. It's really important to know the shape before you start dealing with which of these statistics are accurate. With this shape, histogram being skewed right, I know right away that the mean and standard deviation are not accurate. I should not use the mean as my average and I should not use the standard deviation as my spread. Um, I really want to move to using quartiles. So we said when in our study of non-normal skewed data that we want to use the median as the average. So the average 
price, uh, the average amount of money that these stat students spend on um, on uh, their cell phones per month is about $45. So that's the average. Okay, $45. Um, again, because this was a skewed right data set, the mean got pulled in the direction of the skew. So that's why this mean is sort of an inflated average. It's not very, not very accurate. It's a little higher than the median. The median's much more accurate in this case. We said that typical values will fall between quartile 1 and quartile 3. So typical students spend between $0 for their cell phone and $80 for their cell phone. Probably zero because maybe their parents are, are uh, <clears throat> paying for their, their um, cell phone. So typical students will fall between zero and 80, so Q1 and Q3. Now the one thing we learned was the uh, spread for skewed data sets is the interquartile range, IQR. The problem is StatKey did not calculate it. So, but we can remember the formula. The formula for IQR is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So if we did 80 minus 0, I would get 80. So the IQR actually was 80. Okay, so that would be the spread. So typical students are within $80 of each other. Typical, um, typical amounts spent on cell phones. We see the minimum and the maximum. Um, now, what about outliers? Now, we instead of you trying to calculate the outlier cutoffs, which you could do by hand, but it's easier actually to go ahead and just click box plot. If you remember, a box plot finds the outliers for you. But a box plot, remember, is tied to the quartiles. So if you're using the quartiles, Q1 and Q3 and the median, you really want to make a box plot. So we're just going to click on this box plot button. And if you notice, it has a box plot here. And this is an interesting box plot. Look at these little stars. We learned last time that these are the outliers. So you can actually just hold your cursor on each one and write them down. So we had a student that said uh, 220 was an outlier, $230 was an outlier. We had three students that said $250, those were all outliers. Two students that said $300 two students that said $350, one student that said $435 a month, and another student said $500 a month. Um, that is quite a bit. I wonder if maybe they're thinking of uh, maybe they were spending for their whole family. That, that could also be the case. Now let's look at the box itself. Remember the box plot goes from quartile 1 to quartile 3. So this bottom of the box is quartile 1, quartile 3, and then the, the line in the box is the median average of $45, and we can see those here. Now this is really interesting because we have whiskers, right? Whiskers are these lines that usually come off the left and right of the box. Um, they'll go to the lowest number in the data set that is not an outlier. So if you notice in this problem, um, th there is no left whisker. That's because there were so many students that answered zero that the minimum value was zero, but also quartile one, so a full 25% or less of our students answered zero. They spend zero for their cell phones. So, um, so that's why the minimum value and the quartile one were both zero. So that's why the box looks like it doesn't have a, a left whisker. Most of the time it would. The top whisker, which goes to 200, again would be the highest number that is not considered an outlier. Remember the whiskers are not considered outliers, so this whisker going up to 200 tells us that 200 is the highest amount that was not an outlier. Okay, so again, an easy way to get all the outliers is to simply look, may have the computer make a box plot. Now let's do this uh, same thing that we just did a second ago. Let's do this on Staccato. So let's do that. I'm going to go open Staccato. Now again, we're going to want to uh, put our data in. Now remember, this data set was 331 values. Staccato, when you first open it up, always has a default of 300 values. So I'm going to want to add a few rows to this before I copy and paste. So I'm going to go to Edit and Add Multiple Rows. Edit and Add Multiple Rows. And I'm just going to add another let's say another 50 rows and now my my column goes all the way to 350 alright so 
Um, so let's go ahead and paste in our data. So we're going to paste in the, um, the data from the dollar amounts for cell phones. There it is. Um, by the way, you can drag open the column a little bit to see your, see your whole title if you like. There we go. And there's our data. Now, again, if we want to make a, a dot plot or a histogram, let's make a dot plot, we go to graph. So graph and dot plot. Just click on the, on the column that you want to make a dot plot for. If you click this button that says show legend, it'll put an automatic title in there. Or you can type in your own title under plot title. So there we go. How much money? There it looks. There it looks very skewed right. You can see all the zeros. See a lot of dots on zero. Remember, if you want to copy and paste a graph out of Stat Cato, you have to push Graph and then Copy Graph. It won't do Control C. So if you are copying and pasting, I need to copy, push Graph and Copy Graph. Now, what about a histogram? Histograms are better for seeing shape. Let's go to Graph and Histogram. Don't forget, bar chart is for categorical data. We would not use bar chart. You want to use histogram. And then just click on the column. Um, if you click show legend here, it'll put in a title for you. And you can also determine how many bars you want. They call it number of bins. So maybe I just want to use, I don't know, five bins or something, or maybe three bins. Uh, you can try different bin amounts and see if you like the look of it. One thing I will say, you'll see this one that says grouped by categories. Stay away from this. Do not click on this. It'll make your histogram look really crazy. So don't ever click the group by categories button. Okay, leave that alone. Um, in fact, a good thing, good thing in Staccato is if you don't know what it is, don't click on it. Okay, so that's probably a good, good, uh, good way to go. All right, so we push OK, and there's our nice histogram, right? So it kind of shows me the shape, definitely skewed right, right? Again, we have a long tail to the right and a short tail to the left, and the highest bar is kind of on the far left. So this is called skewed right, or positively skewed. Again, if you want to copy this graph, push graph and copy. It won't do control C. All right, but now we want, now that we know that it's skewed right, I know what statistics I want. So now I'm going to go to statistics.